let's get started painting our little lamb. This is going to be one of my attempts at being a little bit more realistic, so we'll see how it turns out. Anyway, the surface is kind of small, so you can feel free to enlarge it if you'd like to fit a surface that you have in your stash. If you want the surface that it's on, that can be purchased from Pallet and Sawdust in the U.S. and from Southern Ridge Trading Company in Canada. I've put the websites for both of those below. One of the first things we want to do is we want to give this surface a coat of paint. Now I don't want to use just plain warm white. So I'm going to grab something that has a little bit of a blue undertone. The color I decided to go with is cool white. You don't really notice the blue undertone so much until you get a blue next to it and then you can see it. So a quick coat of cool white. I'll be back when this is completed. Alright so I did put a couple of coats of cool white on there and how dumb am I? My background is blue. My nails are blue. You're going to see the blue in this without me pulling a bottle of paint over. Anyway, um, two coats and then I sanded it lightly so I have a smooth painting surface. And the next thing I want to do is I want to put the pattern on just for the lamb and that circle that goes around behind his head. So just line up your pattern as best you can and let's get this pattern on very light touch since you have that light background still going to use my gray graphite but i'm going to try to do it very light okay let's get this over here a little bit more All right. So just a light touch. Hopefully that wasn't too light. Nope. And then I'm going to put the pattern on for the lamb. This should be an interesting process, to say the least. I'm going to go ahead and put his chin on, just in case I can see it through the base coat I add. And then, let's get the other side. So actually, I'm using a really light touch but um, it's going on kind of dark, so I may hit it with my um, eraser just to lighten it up a little bit. And when you get down here to his body, just bring it all the way down to the edge of the plaque. Okay, so yeah, I want to lighten that up just a little bit. a lot of our painting is going to be with really light colors so we don't want a dark dark pattern showing through so I'm just gonna bring it down just a little bit I'm not erasing it completely If this was uh, going to be based in darker colors, the darker graphite wouldn't matter quite so much. But since it's going to be a little bit lighter, we need to take it down a notch. Alright. So, let's do something to our background. And um, what I want to do is I want to kind of um, 
do a graduation of some colors. Uh, green here in the bottom, working my way up to uh, a blue. You're going to want to get yourself a paper towel, kind of scrunch it up. And what we're going to do is we are going to wet this area around the lamb and that round circle. Now, if you get a little bit in, um, that won't matter. But we want to wet it. I'm going right through his ear. It doesn't really matter. And it's um, not runny wet, but wet that's going to stay wet for a little while. Okay. And then what I want to do is I want to get out some winter blue. Just a little. Doesn't take a whole lot. And I'm going to thin that down to a wash. Let me show you here. I'm using a big brush, thinning it down. And I'm going to just kind of slap that on in the top there. And then I also, oops, guess you can't see that. Kind of slapped it around on the top there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paper towel, kind of blot it. So I'm picking up a lot of that color. Don't worry, we're going to come back and add some more. And I'm going to take some foliage green and put it in the bottom and do the same thing. And I'm going to put it in, in the bottom here and it goes up into the blue a little bit. And here again, blot it out. Okay. I do want a little bit more blue up in the top here. So I'm going to come back with that thin blue and I'm going to go across the top mainly, like above his ears. I'm going to use a different spot on the paper towel because I don't want the sky area to have green in it. So you see it's nice and soft. We've got green down here. Um, I think I could probably put a little bit more green on this side. So it's going to be kind of play with it back and forth a little bit. No exact science. Just kind of get a nice little graduation of color there. And if you wanted to, you could even get dip, dip your paper towel into that thin down paint and come in and add just a little bit more color. Just want to keep it soft like a little lamb. All right, I think that's good. So we want to let that dry and then we're going to get started on this area behind his head. Okay, so I'm going to take some sunny yellow. I'm not going to thin it down and I'm going to paint in this area, the circle part around behind the lamb. So we want that to dry. I believe I need to widen this a little bit. 
right here. look good yet. May never look good. Who knows? Your guess is as good as mine right now. So I want this to dry so I can do some dry brushing on it. And some shading. get out my favorite brush to dry brush with which is a Lang Nickel short round sable or if you use dynasty brushes this is a number 200 and uh, it's a great brush to dry brush with too so I'm going to dry brush in this uh, yellow circle I'm going to first pick up some uh, sunny day and then I'm going to pick up some of that cool white and I want to lighten it up. So I'm just going to dry brush. It's not going to show up a whole lot. Uh, shows up more than I thought it would. I'm going to dry brush all through the center of these areas behind the lamb that are yellow. shading on the yellow around the lamb and I'm going to do that with some very well blended out marigold. I want it to be a nice soft float. I don't want it to be um, real harsh. And you want to walk this color out a little bit. And here again if you like to mop your floats this would be a good place to do it. Helps to soften it out a little bit. So just all the way around the lamb wherever it's on top of this yellow um, burst, sunburst behind it. Just a couple more places. I haven't used marigold in a long time. I actually really like it on this yellow. in January. So we're right in the middle of winter here in Oklahoma. And it is cold. Try not to go out if I don't have to. Yeah, a little dusting of snow, but not nothing too terrible. I think I want to deepen this right in this bottom here just a little bit and walk that color out let's go ahead and walk that color let's deepen right here in that V area by his um, ears And on the other 
other side too. All right. So as long as we're floating shading, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and float um, around this um, plaque itself, the outside edge. Um, in the blue area, I'm going to do it with the very well blended out winter blue. I really, really want to blend that out well. Start over here. Just to kind of finish the edge. Um, if I left it the way it was, it wouldn't look finished. And I'm going to take it down to this little scallop here. If you're using a different surface, you just kind of have to um, going to have to tickle those two colors together. But if you have a scallop to stop at, it makes it a little easier. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and float uh, some foliage green along the bottom where the area is green. That you really want to blend it out and make it nice and soft. And I'll go ahead and start um, in a scallop and work my way up so I can kind of blend those two colors together. That blue and the green. All right. I want to go ahead and go next to his body with that green also. There are going to be flowers on top, so we might as well have that green down there. And again, mopping is not a bad thing here. I got a little wet there but it will be okay. All right, I'm gonna let this dry and then we're gonna do some more work on this sunburst. All right, I'm gonna come back and dry brush some highlighting again in those same areas that I dry brushed before. This time I'm gonna do it with Titanium white, snow white, whichever you prefer to call it. So let's just do a little tickle of a brighter highlight in here. So I keep calling this a sunburst because we're going to try to make it kind of have rays that are going to burst out from it. I'm not exactly sure how this is going to turn out, but you and me are going to try it together. So I think I want to um, start with the sunny yellow. So what I want to do is I want to do a corner load, side load float of sunny yellow, sunny day, not sunny yellow. Blend it out really well. And you want to be a little strategic about where you do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stay on my chisel edge. I'm going to start here in the top and I'm just going to pull kind of a wide ray of that yellow. I'm going to move down, pull some more. I'm 
kind of staying on my chisel. And they're kind of V-shaped a little bit. And we're going to come in and we're going to add a little bit more color to this just to um, make it more noticeable or visible. And you notice I am going around his ear. I'm not going to um, paint inside his ear. We're just going to keep going around the circle, adding these kind of bursts of sun rays. Really simple, not real difficult. And so far, I'm liking the way it's turning out. I'm even going down into this area that will most likely get covered up with um, flowers. But you never know what might peek through. And it's good practice. Think like a little ray of sunshine, which we always are, right? Especially at Easter time. And again, going to go around his ear a little bit. I know I've told you this before, but it seems like every time I go to record a video, I have some kind of a cold. Alright. Cool. I'm pretty happy with that. I think that looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, add just a touch of marigold coming out from the outside edge back into the sun or whatever I'm going to call it. You don't need a lot of marigold. So blend it out really well. Just like these rays are just a hint, that's all you want on your... Um, edge of your rays. A little too much water. Again, a little too much water. You get a feel for it. And of course, since you're coming off the edge, you're going to get little puddles on the edge. But you can fix that later. But just go on each little ray next to the side edge. Stain on the chisel. And add a little bit darker color of sunlight coming from those edges. You know what? I think it's always nice when something that you picture in your head actually cooperates and turns out okay halfway done and I like using bigger brushes 
So it could take you just a little bit longer if you're working with a smaller brush. This is a three quarter inch. And it is a King Art brand. And you'll get faster at this as you go around the edge. Alright. Yep. Looking lovely. What I want to do next is I want to float highlighting on the outside edge of the circle. And I'm going to do that with my uh, titanium white, snow white. And let's just get in here and lighten up this edge a little bit. this work on something that's in the background and going to get covered up with letters. But I think it will make a nice backdrop for that lettering. And try to keep it as round as you can. I got a little pointy there. So the, one of the next things I want to do is I want to take my flat brush and just like I did that marigold on the outside, I'm going to do the same thing up against that highlight I just did. And if it kind of blends into the highlight, that's good. Again, you should be getting really fast at this now, right? Now that you have the hang of it, you know the direction we're going. Now, if you can hear that noise in the background, um, it's my husband. He's adding section to our closet where I can hang all my purses. I have a few purses. Not, not as many as I used to. I used to buy a new purse like every other week. Those did not come from California with me. come back and I'm going to float this highlight one more time just because I want to widen it a little bit I apologize 
apologize for the noise. I told him I was going to be doing a video, but I don't think he realized that our closet backs up against the wall that's in front of me. And I'm not going to complain because he's making improvements that I'm going to love. Very handy man to have around. So I think I'll keep him for a while. All right. So we're going to leave that be for just a little while. We're going to go to work on our lamb. All right, so I'm going to give my lamb a coat of bleach sand. I didn't want to start with white. We'll get there eventually. But for right now, I just want to give him a coat of bleached sand. All right, so I have just one coat of bleach sand on my lamb. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the pattern on for his inside of his ears, his eyes, his mouth. And if you need to reapply the pattern for his chin, um, that would be good. Again, very light. I'm going to try to go even lighter than I did the last time. So I want to get this little... Yeah, that's good. So I'm just kind of dragging this pen along the surface a little bit. don't uh, want to apply any pressure really at all. So I want to keep this very light. I will go down and do this little chin. And I'm going to warn you ahead of time, this guy is really going to experience puberty. He's going to look really ugly for a long time, so don't be discouraged. It'll be okay. Alright, nice soft pattern applied. What we want to do first is we want to start setting in some of the deeper areas. And I'm going to use um, quite a bit of wet-on-wet -wet painting here. All right, so I'm, this is going to sound a little scary. I know, but trust me. I'm going to load my flat brush, blush, my fat, <laughs> my fat, my flat brush with the bleach sand. And then I'm going to pick up some... Sable brown, and I want to make, let's see, I want to make a kind of a lighter value of sable brown. Okay, so you see we got that going there. And let's see, what I want to do is I want to set in some of the darker areas. And part of that is going to be under his chin. So remember, wet on wet here. So I'm going to go on this side of his body a little bit. And I'm going to 
kind of slip slap this in there. Not this side. And this side does get a little bit of the brown, but not quite as much as the left side does. I'm going to pick up some bleach sand and just kind of mix and blend that in a little bit. Get rid of some hard lines. You can see I haven't washed my brush out at all. I'm just picking up these colors and kind of wet on wet blending them together. Okay. Now here comes the scary part. I'm going to pick up just a little bit of true blue. I want to mix that with that um, bleach sand sable brown a little bit. Because in those shadow areas, we want it to have a little tint of blue. So I've got a little tinge of blue here, and I'm just going to put this in what I'm going to consider to be the darker areas. Which is going to be mainly on this left side a little bit. And just kind of... Blend that down. So it's kind of a gray. All right. So we're getting the shadows set into his body a little bit. And if this doesn't look good, don't worry, we're going to put flowers on top of it. So I'm just going to wipe my brush out and I'm going to go to his ears. And um, his ears, of course, are going to be darker next to his head. So again, with the sable brown bleach sand, I'm just going to tickle in some of this color. I'm not doing the inside of his ears right now. We'll come in with the pinks and do that. But I do want to do this bottom edge a little bit. Not too terrible much. All right. And so while this is still kind of wet, again, I'm going to pick up a little bit of the um, true blue. And that's a very strong color, so blend it really well with that um, sable brown ble uh, bleach sand mix. And let's just tuck a little bit of that in where his ear meets the head. Now don't worry about having nice clean edges because we need to make him um, look kind of fuzzy, right? So we'll do that in a little bit. Again, and the reason I'm not uh, doing both ears as, at once is because I want to work wet on wet. So, again, with the bleach sand sable brown mix. And I'm going to go down here in the bottom of his ear a little bit. And then I'm going to come across the top here. All right. And then I'm going to pick up that little bit of blue. I mean, it's just a tiny touch of blue. I'm going to deepen those areas right next to the head. And he's, see I told you he was going to be ugly for a while. And I was right, right? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and wash
wash my brush out just so I can start fresh. And uh, if you look at the pictures in your packet, um, maybe you'll be able to see it a little better. I want to add a little bit of this dark color, like under his nose, under his mouth, um, and kind of over on the left side of his head also. So again, I'm going to pick up that sable brown and bleach sand. And I'm just going to do the side of his head here. Think like a sheep, right? Isn't that what I always say? I'm going to take it down to his eye. And it's going to come around a little bit. it out so I'm going to pick up some more bleach sand kind of soften those edges a little bit and let's see I did say I wanted to put a little bit of darker under his nose and under his mouth don't worry too much okay it'll be okay just going to take a little bit of work and of course we want to go under this eye brow I went ahead and went right over his eyes it'll be okay a little bit and we're going to come around this side a little bit this right side so this is going to be one of those uh, things that you're going to have to back up the video maybe a little a few times just to kind of get the gist of where this guy is going okay I'm going to go ahead and do um, the tips of his ears I picked up quite a bit uh, of bleach sand in that my dirty brush just so I can Get those tips of his ears done. Okay. And now we need to come again with a little bit of that uh, blue in that uh, sable brown bleach sand mix just a teeny tiny bit it's so such a strong blue and I just want to do a little bit more blue I think maybe a little bit more brown and I'm just oh yeah that's better I'm going to do this side of his head And um, maybe a little bit right in here. And you can see I'm not being real careful about this stuff. I mean, I'm following the pattern, but it's not like we usually do definite floats and that kind of stuff. I want a little bit of that under his little eyebrow on this side and if it's a little dark don't even worry about it it'll be okay because we'll come back so I need a little bit on this side above his eye there and then I also need a little bit coming down and around his muzzle just a tiny bit on this side okay so I'm going to wash my brush out he looks kind of like a lamb a little bit and now I'm going to pick up some straight leech sand and I'm going to 
just kind of add a little bit of light on his cheek. I'm going to add a little bit of light in his nose. And then he also has a little bit of lighter around his muscle. And as you can see, I'm blending that color back into those dark areas a little bit to soften them. So let's get on this other side of his muzzle. I'm going to go above his mouth a little bit. And so this is going to be one of those things that you just kind of work on and play with back and forth. It's not a one, two, three, that's how it's done kind of thing. I want to do a little bit of light above his eye. And I'm going to blend that a little. Also, I'm going to go across what his snout would be. So his face isn't flat. It's got a little bit of a snout that sticks out. Okay. We're getting there, guys. We're getting in the underwear. And it's really not as hard as you might think it is. Okay, so I need to go above this eye. And above that eyebrow a little bit. Let's go above this eyebrow. Okay. Now, let's see. Let's pick up a little bit of that titanium white and reinforce or lighten his little chin a little bit and if we lose his mouth a little bit it's okay we'll come and put it back in and I also want to do this on his nose I'm going to lighten up his nose area Fingers are good for blending too. And let's go above his mouth a little bit. And this is with um, your dirty brush in the Snow White. Trust me. He's in his teenage years right now. Let's do a little bit lighter across the top of his ears. And he needs a little bit lighter going up this snout area. So I'm going to pull a little bit of this lighter color into his um, right side of his kind of chest area.
brush is getting a little dry. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to it, just so that the paint moves a little bit better. I'm starting to like him. I think we'll add a little bit of this white above his little um, eye there. Alright, how's it looking? I think we got this side a little light and this side not light enough. So we'll just pull a little bit more light on this side. Okay. So we have our, kind of have our darks and our shadows uh, put in. I, mm, let's pull a little bit more light on these little cheeks. Just needed to lighten those up a little bit. Alright, I think what we're going to do next is work on the inside of his ears. So inside his ears, what we want to do is we want to load our brush with some water and then thin down terra coral just a little bit. Not, not a lot. You don't want liner consistency. You just want the paint to be able to move a little bit. And we're going to just kind of roughly paint the inside of these ears. I'm going to work one ear at a time, of course, with this terra coral. And you also want to get out some deep burgundy. All right, so I'm not going to wash out this brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of deep burgundy and mix it with my terra coral. And what I want to do is I want to add some darker color up here in the top of this ear and where it comes out of the head. Okay, and I'm using a round brush now because I'm working in a smaller space. I'm just going to wipe my brush out a little bit, pick up some terra coral and pick up some titanium white, snow white. And I just want to lighten up the bottom of that inside of that ear a little bit. And I'm going to wipe the brush out again and go right to my deep burgundy and just do a little bit darker. All right? So let's do our next ear, or the other inside of our ear. And again, I'm going to add a quick, rough base coat of terra coral. Alright, I'm going to pick up a little bit of deep burgundy with my dirty brush that has terra coral in it 
and that's gonna get stuck up in the top of that ear a little bit. A little bit more deep burgundy. Wipe the brush out. Pick up a little snow white with your terra coral. And let's lighten this little bottom area here. You guys are probably going, what the heck? Sandy doesn't ever paint like this. But there's always a first time, right? And I come back with just straight deep burgundy. Well, it's on my dirty brush, so it's not exactly straight. And I'm gonna drop some more of the darker into the top. All right, we'll come back and do more to the ears in a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna start using a brush that um, is new to me. It's a small point blender by um, Dynasty. I got this from the brush guys. And um, it's, I don't know how to describe it. It's a little bit, it's not as stiff as a stencil brush, but it's not as soft as what I use to dry brush with. And so I wanted it to have a little bit of um, firmness to it. And what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna start here on his body, I'm gonna pick up some of the bleach sand on this. And I'm just gonna kind of rub it around on my palette a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start very lightly touching this surface where the dark is and what I'm doing is I'm kind of going in circular motion and I am going to get off the edge a little bit and keep in mind this is again the first layer I want to be able to see that uh, darker color through there so bleach sand in your point blender, just little kind of scruffy circles. So we're going to start making him look like a lamb with curly hair. But we don't want to wipe out all that work we just did. So be sure you're leaving um, some of the dark color showing through. And just like everything else, the more you do it, the little bit quicker you'll get at it. And we will come and lighten this up just a little bit more. But for right now, we're working in this dark area. We want to Keep it kind of neutral to not wipe out our shadows completely. Hey, he's looking kind of fluffy already. And of course, I'm going to get out here into this area that's kind of no man's land. It's neither dark nor light. And again, just little circles, not lined up like soldiers. Think like the buzz of a um, sheep. I'm going to pick up now some of the titanium white. And I'm going to start on this other side here. This is the lighter side. So I needed to get a little lighter. And again, coming off that edge a little bit, just to fluff it up. Okay. 
Okay. And we're going to work our way back into the dark area. And my brush had a little bit of um, bleach sand on it, so it's not completely white. And I started down here because I wanted to be able to um, get a feel for this before I went anywhere else on him. And this part's going to have flowers on top, so if it doesn't look that great to start with, it's okay. This is a good place to practice. I'm coming back in here, getting a little bit lighter, a lot lighter right there, and then, but I'm still able to see that dark we put in there, so don't just keep thinking, I want to leave the dark, I want to leave the dark side. Okay. I think he's looking kind of fluffy. I don't know about you. I'm going to go back to this light side and lighten it even more. Okay, now we're cooking. Luckily, it's not lamb. All right, I think that's looking pretty fuzzy. So let's work on his ears. Again, the same thing. I'm gonna use um, bleach sand still have a little bit of that white in there and I'm just gonna and you want to get off into that inside of the ear and you also want to get along this top edge that's a little bit tougher maybe Now, I think I kind of wiped that out a little too much, but you know what, I can always come back with a float. And this is working pretty good um, to just kind of tap it on there. He's got to have some little fuzzy ears. I'm going to pick up a little bit more bleach sand as I get into this shadow area. He has a little bit of hair inside his ears. That's okay. a little bit more involved than your typical base coat it, shade it, highlight it, stipple it, whatever. But I think it's going to be quite cool.
Okay, I'm going to go to his other ear. I'm going to start with that bleach sand. Again, tapping it is just, is working good here. Going into some titanium white. I'm going to get a little lighter on these tips of these ears. looking pretty good. Nice fuzzy ears. A little bit more fuzz over here. Okay. Um, let's work on his head a little bit. Darker on this side, so I'm going to start with the bleach sand. his head is the little circle-y things, but as you get kind of down by his eyes, it turns more into a, um, what do I want to say, like fur, like straight fur, so keep that in mind. Again, I'm going to rough up that edge a little bit. I'm going to pick up my titanium white, work on this side which is the side that has a little bit more light to it. Right now, I'm going to get into this area here, so I'm going to pick up a little bit of um, the bleach sand and a little bit of the sable brown, and I'm going to kind of scrub this on less um, little dotting but in more a scrubber uh, motion. Okay. Let's pick up a little uh, Snow White and lighten that up a little bit. But we still want that dark under there, okay? Now, his right above his eye, we need to lighten that up a little bit. So I'm going to pick up the titanium white. 
and I'm going to just kind of tap that area in right above his eye. We can do that on both sides. to go um, what I'm considering like an eyebrow and I want to it's dark now so I want to come up and kind of tap in a little bit of light there And a little bit of light over here. All right. Let's see. We need to work on this area right here. His kind of cheeks underneath his eyes. And so there's going to go some you want to stroke or scrub some bleach sand under there and we're going to do that on both sides So I want to come in with titanium white and I kind of want to, I'm going to pick up a little bit of bleach sand also. I want to kind of rough up the sides of his face a little bit. I say rough up, I just want to make him look fuzzy. Still dark over on this side, but it's a little fuzzy now. Let's get the other side done. This other side has a little bit more titanium white than the dark side. Let's get his chin too. Alright, <clears throat> he does have a little bit of um, fuzziness um, above his nose and um, in his little, the little areas below his nose, but above the mouth. So again, with titanium white, I'm going to touch in. a little bit lighten up that area I guess you 
um, would you call that his snout? And I'm gonna lighten up his snout quite a bit. Come down here under his mouth a little bit. And we'll come back and put his nose back in. Don't worry. to lighten up this side of his face. So I'm going to come with um, titanium white and just kind of scrub that. Make it a little lighter. A little bit of pink. There's just a touch of pink um, on his cheeks here and below his nose and below his mouth. I'm not washing my brush out. I'm just wiping it out. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that terracotta and a little bit of the deep burgundy. And I'm also going to pick up some of the titanium white just because I don't want it to be um, extremely pink. So I'm going to start with just a little, wiping my brush, I want it a little drier. Just a little hint of pink in that nose area in the mouth. And then there is just a little hint of pink right here on either side of the snout. And I think I'm going to add just a little touch of pink in this shadow area. I don't know why, but I just did. All right. I'm going to wash this brush out just for now because I want to come back with straight titanium white and I need to get some fresh because mine has pink in it now. And I'm going to bump up some of the areas a little bit. I'm going to bump up this right here. Both sides. to bump up around the top of the head. I want to also bump up a little bit on the snout and the nose. A little too far down there. And a little bit on the chin. Top of the lip, maybe too. Kind of looks like he has like a mustache or something. 
And let's just kind of drag what's left on the brush through this center area here. We can also bump up right above the eyes right here. This is all with titanium white. Okay. So, I think what we need to do is we need to come in with some regular floats. Can you believe that? I think I'm done with the point blender right now. And I'm just gonna come in with a nice, very well blended out corner load float of sable brown. I'm just gonna deepen this area on the ears next to the head a little bit get the other side so it's very soft I mean I'm barely quarter loaded and then I also want to go under this chin a little bit So tiny touch. I mean, we're talking just the very corner into that true blue. So we can um, paint his or shade under his mouth and his nose. Again, very, very soft. Um, so I'm going to go under his nose first. And see how soft that is? It's very blended out. And I'm just bringing his nose back. And his mouth is <clears throat> quite a bit whiter than what it shows right there. I mean his nose, his mouth. What was I talking about? I had nose on the brain. And I use my little point blender to blend those edges a little bit. Alright, and I know it looks a little rough right now, but it'll be okay. We also want to float just a touch of that sable brown, straight sable brown, no blue, that comes from his nose, um, in between his nose and his mouth. Looks good to me. Back, I just decided on another place that should have a little bit of that <clears throat> sable brown float. And that is going to be right um, inside his nose. So you want to just kind of touch some of that sable brown 
inside his nose a little bit. So soft black. And with your best little liner brush, this is a number two, and some thin soft black, we want to line the mouth and the nose. So stay as straight up and down as you can on the tip. And just give him a little mouth. And it's really okay if it doesn't match completely because we can come in and fix that. Okay, and then also his nose. about some eyes. Let's paint the round part of his eye with a liner brush and true blue. This is going to be a pretty little blue-eyed lamb. I guess I could be on camera. Now we're going to deepen these a little bit, so don't worry about it too, too much. We want to let that dry a little bit. So while we do that, we can go ahead and put the pattern on for our flowers. Now we're going to add some filler flowers and leaves and stuff that aren't on the pattern. But... Um, See, I can also make his eyes a little bigger. Looks like. Yeah. So. 
just going to put the stem line on for these leaves over here. And I'm just going to put the circle on for the round flowers. doesn't have to be adhered to perfectly, okay? So now that I saw that I can enlarge his eyes a little bit, I think I'm going to feel much better about him. I'm letting his eyes dry. I'm going to come back with my liner brush and some. I'm going to mix a little bit of deep burgundy and a little bit of soft black. So I'll show you what color I'm looking for. It kind of reminds me of uh, chocolate covered cherry or strawberry, whatever. And um, with my liner brush and thin paint that mix of deep burgundy and soft black. I'm just going to very lightly line inside the ears a little bit. just to give the inside of those ears a little bit more interest, okay? So what I want to do now is with my liner brush and some thin sable brown, I'm going to actually line a few little eyebrow hairs, kind of. Not too many. He's not doing a TikTok video about how to do your eyebrows. I'm also going to take my flat brush and I'm going to do a float of sable brown. Just a touch of soft black. Just want to deepen it a little bit. But I want to blend it out well. I don't want it to be real stark. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to float this area that is um, makes his eye here. So just this little tiny float. And it can go across the blue. It's okay. I'm 
kind of using my spot blender to spot blend. We also want to take some of that sable brown in the soft black mix and let's get a little closer to his eyes. Now, I don't know if I really want you to see him, but he has like a lower lid kind of that uh, we want to add to the bottom of this eye. And it's kind of a wash of that sable brown soft black mix. Okay, so it would be what, hmm, how can I explain this? Yeah, it, it's just kind of lining the top edge of his lower eyelid and giving him a, a like where your tear ducts are, giving him that. And then with a little bit of bleach sand, we want to just line the corner of that eye. We want to highlight it a little bit. I'm not going all the way to the edge. I'm just kind of highlighting the tear duct part. So his pupil, let's go ahead and paint that in soft black. And it's pretty big. All right, one down, one to go. So now what I want to do is I want to pick up that true blue and I'm going to lighten it a little bit with some snow white and I'm going to line a little highlight on the blue portion of his eye that's left. blue eyes. All right, he has a little, let's do titanium white highlight in each pupil. And that's kind of like a little, um, I don't know how to explain it, like a little rectangle maybe? blob, whichever works for you. Then you want to get out an even smaller liner brush and some thin soft black and we're going to give him some eyelashes. <laughs> These are going to go just on the top. You can start them down in the corner of the eye, but they really don't start Flicking out till you get about halfway across the top of the eye. Okay, I'm going to turn this guy around and hope I can get the same flick because you know it's always different.
All right. All right, I'm going to take my little spotter again with some titanium white. And I just want to brighten up this little area, right? Like the cheek area under his eyes. Just tap a little bit of warm white in there. I mean, snow white. I'm so used to using warm white. So I'm just gonna brighten up that cheek area a little bit. And maybe a little bit more over here on his ear. Oops, could have backed up a little bit. ear. The tip of that one really needed a little bit more brightness. So just kind of look at your little guy and if you want to brighten up some areas, go ahead. And add a little bit more lighter in this top here. I'm just looking at him and thinking, where do I want to make him a little fluffier? I definitely want to fluff up this area right above to the side of his uh, above his eyebrow and to the side a little bit so above the eyebrow and up to the side a little bit that makes any sense I have no idea how I'm going to write these directions I'm just saying and let's get a little bit lighter in there This is very much a back and forth piece. So I'm looking at him and I'm liking him a whole lot, which is probably a bad thing. This little chin needs to be straightened out a little bit. I know they're not really symmetrical, but That just needed a little bit of work. All right, and I think I'm going to lighten up this side a little bit. But if yours is already light enough, just leave it be. Let's get to some fun stuff now. I think we've struggled enough, or if we haven't struggled enough, um, then that's a good thing. But all I can say is, as you're working on this little guy, just take your time. Don't try to rush it, okay? Um, you want him to look like a nice little fuzzy little lamb. And um, just take your time. There's no hurry to this. All right? Okay, so let's work on some flowers. I haven't quite decided what color they're going to be yet. But I do know one thing I want to do first, and that's to take my liner brush and some titanium white, snow white again, and I'm going to add a very thin stripe around this edge, and I want to do that before I get my flowers done. So thin titanium white and I'm going to start where there's a little point. 
And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a thin stripe of white paint. And here again, all it's going to do is just kind of finish off that edge. Um, make your eyes stop so it doesn't leave the piece. If that makes any sense, because you don't want to, you don't want people's eyes to leave the ple the piece too fast. You want them to look at all that hard work you did on your little lamb. I have one of my hairs that keeps wanting to join the party. So if you Use liner consistency paint. Stay as straight up and down. I'm a little bit tilted on your brush on the tips as you can. And just kind of watch where you're going. You should do a pretty good job at adding this little borderline. And again, this is another one of those. Don't try to hurry through it. And I think you can tell already that kind of the rays draw you to the edge, but the, the borderline kind of stops you before you exit the piece. Okay, almost done with the borderline. All right, so there we go. I really, really like him. Kind of hate to cover him up with flowers, but we gotta add something to this. All right, so we're going to work on the flowers. And one of the first things we're going to do is we are going to work on um, these um, leaves that come off the sides. So what I want to do first is I want to line that center vein line, or the stem, not the center vein line. I want to line the stem, and I'm going to do that with a liner brush and some Hauser medium green. So it's just a quick um, line, not too, too thin. You want it, it's a stem, so you want to be able to see it. It doesn't have to be all thin and stuff. So both sides. Okay. 
Then what I want to do is I want to take a round brush, and this is a number four round. And I'm going to load it with foliage green, and I'm going to tip, just pick up a little bit of Hauser Medium on the um, tip of the brush. And I'm going to paint some uh, long kind of stroke leaves. So I'm going to start right at the tip of that um, stem, set the brush down, flatten it, and then as I pull up away, I pull up so I get kind of a, a point. So it's a comma stroke per se. That's why it's called stroke leaves. And you can just add these all along this stem and they don't have to be and preferably they're not all the same length or color Just quick and easy little stroke leaves. So I'm going to add some to the other side without getting my hands in. Right. That's always the trick. have one side done. Add one more for good measure. Okay, to me that looks kind of eastery. So now you can work on the other side, keeping your hands out of the side you just finished. Of course one side is always easier than the other. exactly the same. They don't have to have the same amount of leaves on them. Do the other side. Slowly but surely, we're getting there. All right. Now, let's back up a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, just wipe this brush out and I think I want the sunny day and I'm just going to line 
um, overstroke, a highlight in each of those leaves with a little bit of sunny day. So I just washed, I just wiped my brush out. I didn't wash it out. So when I pick up the sunny day, I kind of um, tap it on my palette a little bit. So I'm mixing it and getting a lighter value green. And all I'm going to do is pull a little bit. I think I need a little bit lighter. Yeah. Of a highlight from the tip of each leaf out. I mean down. I don't know what I mean. But hopefully you figured it out by watching me. I don't want to cover the leaf completely. I still want that green behind it. But I do want some of this yellow on there. And that um, not only highlights the leaves, but it also ties the leaves in with the rest of the piece. So let's do the other side. Same thing. go pretty quick because you already have the leaves on there so you know where this is going to go. All right. We have a few larger leaves here. Um, three of them. And I'm just going to take a filbert, a number six, and base those in with Hauser Medium Green. And they're just your everyday run-of-the-mill leaves. Nothing fancy. Although I will come back and add some filler leaves around these when we get our flowers done. So just three quick leaves. And if you want to add more, you can. And we'll let those dry before we do anything else to them. All right, we're going to paint um, these two round circles. They're going to be flowers. They're not going to be round circle flowers. We are going to paint them with a filbert brush, our number six again, with terra coral, and we're going to tip that brush into snow white. What I want to do is I want to paint kind of, let's put a little dot where the center of this um, flower is. Okay. And with that terra coral um, snow white, I want to paint some heart shaped leaves. Um, petals, not leaves. When I I also want to pick up a little deep burgundy now and then just to vary the um, color of the petals. Okay. So I'm doing these three back petals first. Right. I'm going to let this one dry, so I'm going to go over here and do the three back petals on this guy. And 
and they're kind of they're heart shaped so you kind of do two strokes of your filbert together to make that heart shape Now I'm going to, to um, do the front petals, and there are just two of those. So I'm going to pick up the terra coral and the um, snow white, because I want those front petals to be just a little bit lighter. And they're, they're um, what do I want to say, their points of those petals are going to come down a little bit farther so drop that little center circle down a little bit and let's see what we come up with looking pretty good and let's get the other side in and it's okay if you have an opening right there for the center. It'll be just fine. Okay. Pick up and do the other sides. So now what I want to do is I'm going to let that dry, but in the meantime, I'm going to uh, line the stems with some foliage green in my liner brush. So there's kind of a little calyx. And then you just kind of line off the edge there. So a little bit of a calyx. And then line, just line off the edge. I'm going to dry these and then I'm going to come back and do a little shading and a little highlighting and add a center. And, and then we'll move on to the sunflower. All right, so I'm going to float some shading at the base of each of these petals with some deep burgundy. Just a nice, well-blended out float. I'll start in the back here. I'm going to separate these um, petals from each other. Kind of give them a little bit of shape. And then these front ones, I should have started with the front ones. What was I thinking? Just a nice little float of deep burgundy. They're not really hard flowers. Now this side I'm going to start in the bottom, in the bottom petals. Done. 
um, get on those back petals just to separate them from the front ones and from each other. And this kind of draws the color of the inside of the ears in. Now I also want to take my filbert and with um, straight Snow White, I want to add a little bit more highlight to the tips of those petals. So it's not, it's wet, but it's not real wet. It's only wet because I had to wash it out. And so what I'm going to do is just on these front ones, I'm going to pull a little bit of light color to bring them a little bit more forward. And I'm going to do a little bit on the back. A little bit, not much. Okay. So now they even look like more like hearts. Let's get a little on these. Not too much. I'm going to take my liner brush and some Hauser medium green and um, line some shading on those stems. So where it comes off the edge of the piece, you want to line a little bit of Hauser medium green. And then you also want to get up into that center just a little bit. and line in there. So you're bringing it up a little bit further. You don't have to necessarily fill it in that uh, negative space or empty space completely. All right. And now what we want to do is we want to get some marigold out. I could use a sunny day, but I want a little bit more of a gold or, or uh, orange kind of tinge to this. And we're going to add the little centers into our flowers. And those are just little lines of marigold that meet uh, that stem. And then I want to lighten those up a little bit with that sunny day. Just the tips. A little too much there. I say just the tips and then I drag it down a little bit further. Okay. Then we need to add some little dots of uh, green. I'll do Hauser Medium. I'm just going to use my little liner brush. And those dots are going to just come up from the stem area. Now let me get a little closer. Okay, so just a couple little, a few little dots of green coming from the stem area into the yellow part. And then we also want to pick up a little titanium white and kind of dot a little bit at the ends of those yellow things. Those yellow, what are they called? Pistols? So we're going to move on to this center flower, which you can see has kind of changed a little bit. We're going to base that in with baby blue and we're going to base 
like we did these flowers, we're going to kind of base a petal at a time. So I'm going to take the baby blue and tip it in the um, snow white. And I'm going to start with these back petals first. Now they get, they'll get a little darker, but I'm just going to kind of roughly paint these in and I don't mind at all that they're kind of variegated. That's kind of what I want, actually. It'll make them a little easier to tell the petals apart from each other. This one here. Pick up a little more warm white there. So they're very um, kind of loose and ruffly, if that makes any sense. It goes right over those pink flowers you spent so much time on. I'm bring this up a little bit. Isn't it fun creating with me? I mean, we get to be surprised on every turn. So another, I think I want a little bit more white on that one. So just keep it kind of roughly. And we'll come in and um, do some shading to um, deepen those areas a little bit. Now I want to dry these back petals before I come with the uh, front petals. We've kind of got an oval center. It's not, you know, it's facing. It's a little cockeyed. But that's how flowers are. Okay, so a little bit more. White in these front panels. Even more white, I think. And it's not as many front petals as is usually the case with flowers. flower. So again, while I let that dry, I'm going to take some of my um, soft black. Now it sounds kind of harsh, but no worries. We are going to lighten it up just a little bit with some of our Snow White. So we get kind of a light grayish brown. And there are some filler flowers here. I'm going to just stroke on the um, stems. I really would like those to be thinner. I guess I could have used a different liner brush. 
and I'm going to come and pull some from here, add some in the bottom. And let's get one over here. And then another one over here in the bottom. So what I want to do now is I want to get out a little bit of true blue. And I'm going to float some shading on this blue flower. And I'm going to do that on the back petals next to the front petals. Now you want to blend it out a lot. You don't want it to be real, real harsh. So I'm going to go just around these front petals. And I do want to soften those floats a little bit. Let's go right next to this one. It's kind of easy to see. get this last one down here. I also want to float um, at the base of the petals. say it's not just a straight flow you just kind of tippy tap and make it a little rough so that your petals have some um, wrinkles and stuff in them and lines add a little character to them So I'm going to do that on the back petals. You don't want to leave them alone. This is going to kind of help to add that ruffly look.
think I'm going to work on this petal deep in it just a little bit. All right, I really want to curl some of those edges a little bit. So I'm just going to come in and add a little float where a corner might be flipped on um, <clears throat> these petals. And we'll come back and reinforce that with a highlight in just a second. Don't get too carried away, though. Okay, now with your liner brush, excuse me, and some titanium white, you're going to highlight those flips just a little. Or a lot. Maybe just add a little bit more interest to the flower petals. And you can do that too. Uh, some of the front ones if you want. And just look at them and where you want to add a little bit more interest. Just add a little flip. All right. And the center, I want to tap that in with marigold. And it's kind of an oval. Tap it in so that you um, get that nice um, kind of fuzzy edge. We're all about fuzzy on this piece, right? Doesn't have to be filled in completely. Unless you want it to be. center. And then of course some snow white. We're just going to add a little bit of a highlight to that top of that center. All right. Now we need to decide what color we're going to make these filler flowers. And I'm thinking, <clears throat> what am I thinking? I think probably I'm going to pick up some marigold with my liner brush and then tip it in some deep burgundy. And I'm just going to set down. Some little filler flowers. So marigold, 
and then tip in the burgundy and kind of tap it on your palette a little bit. Nothing too spectacular. We'll add a few down here. You might not be able to see them as much. Pick up a little more gold. And let's do a few over here. get some down in here. So they're just kind of little set downs. They don't have to be perfectly shaped. They're just little filler flowers. Okay. So what I want to do down here is I want to just take that um, <clears throat> small point blender, pick up some foliage green, and I'm just going to tap some foliage green under here, just to fill that space up a little bit with some greenery. I've got a little much there, but it'll be okay. Maybe a little bit out here. And then, let's see, we need to work on these little leaves. There's only three of them, so that's good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some sunny yellow, and I'm just going to blend it out a little bit more. Add just a quick little highlight across the top with sunny yellow and it basically shows up in the tips and then I'm going to take my soft black I know it sounds odd but I'm just going to float a little bit of soft black at the base of each leaf give those leaves at center vein lines and stems with a um, liner brush and soft black. All right, so I'm going to call, mm, no I'm not, I'm not going to call it, I'm going to Add some little white dots around these little filler flowers just to make them stand out a little bit more. So just a quick little touch of um, titanium white on those little filler flowers just to pop them up a little bit more. Not too much. Water ran down my ferrule. Right. And I think we can go ahead and go to our lettering now. And I have a stencil.
So I'm going to center my stencil. Let's see, the B kind of goes right in the center of his head a little bit. And I'm going to tape it down because I don't want it moving. Can I eyeball it. So I'm going to um, stencil this on with soft black. Try to um, not have too much paint on your brush. That's why I wipe mine off on the towel behind me. very gently add the lettering. Cool. If you have too much paint on the brush, it's going to bleed out beneath the stencil and you don't want that. just to darken it a little bit. <laughs> Doesn't need to be too dark. Be good but I'm always a big believer in I don't want it to look like I stenciled it I need to wash this brush out really good if you don't wash your stencil out brush out good and it gets this build up at the base of it and makes it not a good stencil brush anymore so I did get a little bit of a muff in that A a little bit so all I'm going to do is just come in with some sunny day and open that back up. Alright, so now I'm going to thin down some of the soft black that I used and I'm gonna just kind of fill in those little bridges those little cuts in the lettering that you have to do on stencils to keep um, the lettering, the, the insides from falling out.
Let's back up and see what we have. I think that turned out excellent. And I hope you had fun. I hope it um, was a bit of a challenge for you. It was a bit of a challenge for me. I do know I'm going to go down here and add just a quick float of foliage green. Just to tone that edge down just a little bit and kind of so stuff isn't just floating there in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I think that's better. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed our adventure into trying to paint a more realistic looking lamb. And I hope that if um, you celebrate Easter, that um, you remember it is more about the lamb than it is about the bunny. So add a wire hanger, pretty bow, and hang with pride. If you'd Again, if you'd like to enlarge the design for a piece you have at home, please feel free to do that. I'll see you next time.